speaker is going to be Ennis Afghan talking about enabling compute clusters on top of OpenStack. Um, Tristan's been kind enough to sort of pass on um, some introductions to myself. Um, Ennis is a research scientist at the Centre for Informatics and Computing at uh, Ruda uh, Boschevich Institute and is affiliated with the Taylor Lab at em um, Emory University and the Galaxy Project. Um, before we, before, as he's setting up here, can I also m very briefly mention that it is quite important that we don't bring food or drinks into the auditorium. Um, and if you do, so I can you know, keep them well and truly sealed. How are you going there? Ennis, far away. Thank you very much, Ennis. Uh, all right, excellent. Uh, so yeah, uh, hi everyone. Uh, so yeah, as uh, as I just mentioned, uh, so this project is sort of continuing. To, so the, the name of the project that I'm going to spend most of my time talking about is uh, it's called Cloudman, and uh, I started that as part of my postdoc at. Uh, uh, as part of the Galaxy project and uh, at the Emory University, and it's continuing now to be developed by both uh, the Galaxy project and uh, the Genomics Virtual Lab project, which I'll uh, mention a bit uh, a bit later as well, and, and uh, is one of the, the things that Tom mentioned uh, this morning. So, uh, sort of the idea and the premise uh, behind this uh, uh, this project was that, uh, well, several times today, it was mentioned that, uh, uh, especially from the end users' uh, standpoint and sort of the researchers' uh, uh, standpoint, uh, that they're primarily interested in, in sort of having a, a ready-to-use service, so something that uh, ideally they just go pull up in their browser and uh, start doing things. And, uh, uh, and at the same time, the cloud was sort of emerging, and, and it was uh, quite obvious that, uh, that it's well, pretty cool technology that, that makes the compute capacity available and the compute resources available to those researchers. But the, the, the infrastructure component of it is, is a bit problematic in that uh, you really don't want to have to, or the researchers per se, don't want to deal with, uh, uh, with individual machines, with hard disks, with, uh, with file systems and so on. Instead, they're more interested in this uh, software layer um, of the component. And so that's where the idea of Cloudman emerged, the sort of this bridge as a sort of a, a lightweight uh, platform as well that, uh, that bridges the gap between the flexibility of the infrastructure with the functionality of the, the software as a service. And so the idea is to take uh, individual resources, individual components, uh, group them into meaningful units and expose that uh, uh, via either a web browser or, or a standard interface that, uh, that researchers are already uh, uh, used to. So, that's where uh, sort of Cloudman comes in, and what it does is uh, it's basically an orchestrator. Uh, it requires it uh, orchestrates all the steps required to provision, manage, and uh, and share uh, compute um, platforms on a cloud infrastructure, and uh, primarily through a, a web browser. So, more uh, more specifically, it, it allows one to create a, uh, a dynamically scalable compute cluster on top of uh, otherwise just uh, disparate. Um, instances, and then uh, uh, comes pre-configured with uh, several bioinformatics applications, because that was the domain in which uh, it, it was originally created, but uh, uh, you can add your own, uh, whether they be in bioinformatics domain or any other. Uh, and then once it's all done, uh, including the data that, you, that might have gotten uploaded, you can, uh, you can share it uh, with uh, the world or with, uh, with other users. And so the process of deploying one uh, is basically uh, this list of, uh, of three steps. So you need a, a, an account on a cloud. Um, and uh, you start the master instance just like uh, uh, you would on a, on a cluster. You log into a master node. Well, here you're launching your own master node. And then you uh, get the, uh, the Cloudman interface uh, uh, in a browser that allows you then to manage uh, that cluster and the services that are running on, the, uh, on that cluster. So um, starting one up is uh, when there's two methods. You can either use the, the native cloud dashboard or you can use this uh, uh, web form that we've uh, created as a way to, to sort of get going. And so I'm going to uh, sort of jump in and, and do this in parallel. Uh, I didn't want to do just a demo because it was going to leave me in this really uh, uh, questionable position of either having not too much to talk about or, and things happening too fast or having uh, uh, too much to talk about. So uh, we'll, we'll, so we'll launch one and then I'll go back to the PowerPoint and, and talk and, and as things happen because each of these steps takes a couple of minutes. So uh, each cluster requires a, a name. So. Uh, uh, we'll give it a we'll give it a name. We'll give it a, a password that protects our uh, 
web portal accessing, and then uh, we choose which cloud we want to run on. We'll, uh, we'll choose the Nectar open, uh, open stack cloud, since that's the topic of this. We put in our, uh, our SSH keys, which uh, are conveniently here. We choose the instance type, uh, choose something a bit larger, and uh, we launch one. And, uh, and so this will take a couple of minutes, and so I'll just, uh, uh, so once this happens, we'll get a URL and all, but in the meantime, we'll, uh, we'll just go back to the, uh, the PowerPoint. Um, All right. Um, yeah. So once it launches, uh, we'll get the uh, the Cloudman front end, the web interface. Uh, you uh, you have four types of clusters that you can launch, basically. So the default one being a Galaxy uh, cluster. I'll talk more about Galaxy in a minute, but uh, we'll just keep that in mind. Uh, the other one is uh, the other option is uh, a shared instance of a cluster. So what I mentioned, you can. Uh, you can instantiate somebody else's shared instance. I'll talk more about that later as well. Then you can share a data cluster. I mean, you can start the data cluster, meaning you have a persistent data repository, uh, but no applications other than uh, uh, what's installed on the base image. Uh, but it's persistent, meaning you can terminate it. You can uh, uh, come back, use the same cluster name, launch it, and all your data will be there. Uh, and, all. and then lastly is just a sort of a test cluster, meaning you, you launch one, but once you've terminated it, it's all gone. So it's useful if you have an analysis that you kind of want to do. Um, and you know, it just requires some compute, some capacity. You'll upload some data, some scripts that, that might already be running on a, on a dedicated SG cluster that you have at home or in your institution. Uh, and, uh, and when it's all, the, when the computa computation is done, you'll pull it back off, the, you'll pull the data back off the cluster, terminate, and, and the thing will uh, uh, disappear as if it never existed. Uh, let's see if this thing launched on the, uh, uh, not yet. Um, All right, so once it does, uh, once you choose your type, you get the, uh, the interface up. Uh, it's basically divided into three, these, uh, three, uh, three sections. You have the top, you have the control, so scaling primarily, adding and removing nodes. In the, the middle pane, sort of the middle, the center of the page is the, the status, cluster size, uh, I mean, uh, disk file system size, cluster name, uh, the ability to share, and things like that. And then you have uh, the node view, I mean, the, the kind of the view of the, the nodes that are uh, available. Uh, in the cluster, so they're color-coded. Green means uh, all good. Yellow means something's happening. It's either being added or removed. Uh, and then the, the gray glyphs in the middle sort of indicate the load over the last 15 minutes on that particular node. And so as you scale up or down, the, that, that, uh, that changes. And then the bottom bar, uh, you can expand that into a, a log and sort of see the system log of what's, uh, what's, uh, what's happening uh, on the cluster at any point in time. Uh, I'll go back again. Uh, well, still not there. Um, all right. Uh, so once uh, uh, once all the applications, so th so that basically sets you up. A and at this point, uh, the cluster is ready to be used. Uh, if it was a Galaxy type cluster, uh, you can click on the, the Access Galaxy button, and uh, you'll get Galaxy uh, Galaxy application up and running. And so. Um, what is Galaxy? I guess I'll digress a bit here and talk about Galaxy as a whole. So uh, has any of you, or who has heard of the Galaxy project in the bioinformatics domain? Oh, wow. Uh, all right, so it's, a, uh, it's an open source web-based platform for, for performing accessible, reproducible, and transparent uh, uh, genomic science. Uh, what that uh, sort of entails is that it's basically a, a web execution, I mean, a, 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 yeah, a web-based uh, job execution framework. So you can take uh, any Unix uh, command line tool, uh, write a little uh, XML-based wrapper script that defines it, and it'll expose it in a, uh, in a web front end. Uh, so uh, that's the, the first premise of the Galaxy project. Uh, it's accessible, so it, mean, it means it makes the, uh, the, um, those tools accessible to researchers, to bioinformaticians, biologists. Uh, secondly, it's reproducible, meaning that uh, each step of the analysis, which sometimes can contain, it's the, well, oftentimes tens, if not hundreds, uh, of steps in a given analysis, and uh, each, uh, each step is sort of monitored as, uh, I mean, not monitored, but uh, the parameters of each step are, are kept, so you can always go back and rerun or inspect uh, what parameters you use. And some of these tools will take, uh, you know, 5, 10, 15 different parameters uh, with a large number of variation. You can, uh, you can always go back and check what, uh, what parameters uh, uh, you use and rerun it. Similarly, uh, uh, it, or not similarly, but continuing in that uh, space is that the, the Everything that, that is created within Galaxy uh, is transparent, uh, meaning that you can share it with either individuals or, uh, or the world, may, thus making it public. And so other users, especially after you have published uh, your research and your paper has been published, uh, you share um, uh, your 
components, that, uh, the, the computational components that were done within Galaxy, uh, and then users can, uh, uh, can continue and build on the results that you've already uh, obtained or, or make sure that uh, the results were actually accurate in, in the way you describe them. And so uh, Galaxy by itself can be uh, just used right away as a free public service online. Just go to usegalaxy.org and, and you'll get an instance of, of Galaxy up and running. However, uh, or an, alter an alternative to using uh, the public f public one is to use uh, to download the source, install it yourself, uh, and what you get by that is the ability to customize it. So there's a predefined set of tools that's available on the main instance. There is a, uh, a limited uh, <laughs> capacity in terms of resources, uh, both compute and storage, uh, that's actually made available to users. So if you do download it and install everything by yourself, uh, well, you remove those limitations. However, it requires you also to install and maintain all these things. And a lot of times we're talking 100 plus bioinformatics tools, we're talking terabytes of, uh, of reference data sets that are um, uh, ne in needed uh, to, by these bioinformatics tools. And so uh, th there's this sort of trade-off of, of, you know, well, it's ready and convenient, but it, it's kind of hard and flexible. Uh, and so that's where the cloud sort of comes in and fills the gap of, of largely you get a, a, a functional and, and ready infrastructure with, uh, with Galaxy, uh, but without having to install all this stuff by yourself. And so um, uh, one more slide on, on Galaxy, I guess. So, uh, well, like I said, any, any Unix command line tool, whether it be bioinformatics or not, can be integrated into Galaxy. Uh, means you just take a, a editor, write up an XML document, I mean, an XML file that describes uh, what are the options for a given tool and how to invoke it. Um, once it's done, uh, add, it into, uh, add it into the config file for Galaxy and it'll just be listed as an, ad an additional tool in, um, in Galaxy in, in the web, uh, in the web GUI. Uh, you choose the tool that, you, uh, uh, that you've just defined. Uh, it automatically uh, creates the web front end uh, for it. Uh, you, choose, you specify the parameters as you, uh, as you wish, uh, submit run, and, uh, and the job runs, whether that be on your local laptop or on the cluster. Uh, Galaxy handles that uh, um, transparent or sort of automatically uh, behind the scenes. And this is, you get an element in your analysis step, so an element in what's otherwise called a history. Uh, and you can now inspect, uh, or you can first see you know, get your results and continue, or you can go back and inspect uh, those parameters that I mentioned earlier that, that, that Galaxy keeps track of. Uh, and lastly, there's a, a visualization um, component to Galaxy called Trackster, built on HTML5 and, and uh, very flexible, very scalable, uh, that allows you to visualize uh, data sets and, and things that can be visualized. So, uh, so why is all this actually sort of necessary and all, and it's, uh, it's basically a, a problem with uh, the size of data that, and, the, and the amount of data uh, that's being produced today. So uh, next generation sequencers are sort of uh, in uh, blunt terms, maybe a, a, an X-ray of the future, uh, uh, where uh, uh, a lot of these are sort of being uh, uh, bought and started to being used uh, around the world, uh, and they produce enormous amounts of data. And uh, the prediction is that they will just produce more and more uh, data as, uh, you know, as time passes on. And so uh, the problem is that there's basically not enough um, uh, bioinformaticians to be, able to, um, uh, to be able to process all this data. And so the idea is to empower biologists themselves to be uh, simple tools like we just saw uh, uh, to actually analyze the data that's coming off the machines and that, that's in the interest of their experiment and, and research. And so that's where uh, the Genomics Virtual Lab uh, comes in. Uh, so this is a, a, an Australian national um, uh, project funded by Nectar uh, and co-funded by the, the partnering institutions uh, that basically uh, tries to build an infrastructure uh, in terms of both uh, the, the compute and uh, the capacity and then going up to uh, um, uh, community resources, including tutorials, workshops, and, and best practices to enable both bioinformaticians and biologists uh, to perform data analysis. So uh, it's all, all underlined by this uh, clustering the cloud uh, uh, component by CloudMe and then Cloud by Linux as a, as a set of bioinformatics tools that, that's exposed Galaxy on top of that as a tool in um, uh, as a web front end to a large number of these, these tools and then sort of in the community space uh, create a, a sort of num a number of tutorials and number of, uh, of workshops that teach people how to use this stuff, how to actually do bioinformatics and what these tools do and then uh, uh, parallel to that uh, create a set of best practice workflows or, or protocols that can actually be applied with some tweaking uh, to actual research pro uh, problems that, that people are, uh, are encountering. And so. Um, 
I go back to uh, to talk more about the the sort of cloud in the I mean cluster in the cloud uh, concept and uh, in uh, the cloud. So, like I said, it's been under development for uh, uh, about two and a half, three years or so, uh, uh, and uh, it, well, it continues to be developed. So we've piled up uh, uh, several uh, sort of uh, features that that seem to be quite uh, useful. So basically. Uh, uh, with that uh, uh, web form and launching an instance or two. Uh, let's see what's actually happening there. Well, I don't know, something screwed up because it shouldn't take this long. Um, well, you can try it on your own. Uh, all right, so you basically get a, an SGE cluster, uh, head node. Uh, uh, and you can add workers as uh, as necessary. Uh, we've just added support for Hadoop-based clusters, uh, which those are integrated into uh, into SGE. And then uh, we're working on Condor, uh, integrating integrating with Condor and going with a sort of federated cluster uh, approach. Um, well, you get to configure Galaxy. I'll kind of have to skip through this. So uh, open support for originated on Amazon. Uh, it's been ported to OpenStack, uh, Eucalyptus, and OpenEbula. So basically, any uh, cloud middleware that exists today, um, you can get this working on. Uh, the process of adding it to a machine image is automated. Uh, so you run a script. It installs the dependencies, the packages, and, uh, and you can uh, basically add the cluster on the cloud compute capacity to any uh, Ubuntu-based image at the moment. Um, and so uh, see I'm running out of time, so I'm going to skip through some of these. Um, okay, and the, well, I'll just skip through all of them, and we'll talk about the. Uh, I'll talk about a couple of features uh, a bit later on. So uh, skip through this one as well, and so to say that the. Uh, uh, the idea is to really enable sort of this moving uh, and reproducibility of um, uh, moving and reproducibility of users' environment. Uh, so you can go ahead and, and, and think that if you just look at a general or a, at a, a number of these uh, platform as a service um, offerings, uh, whether they be at the bioinformatics end or at the, the sort of uh, just platform as a service end. Um, uh, oftentimes, there, you know, there's a question of lock-in and, and all that. And here, the idea is to sort of bundle uh, this stuff into a more traditional environment. So, uh, cluster compute environment with uh, with SGE is a, is a pretty standard environment to, to run uh, parallel workloads. And so, uh, uh, you can sort of think that, okay, well, now if if I have that built for me automatically, and I already have scripts that otherwise run on a cluster, but that cluster is full, I just copy things over and and start using it. And then, so if there's not not enough capacity on this cloud. I'll go to another cloud, and ideally that will uh, one day happen uh, uh, automatically. It makes it possible to sort of move because we're, we're working with low enough uh, um, uh, components at both cloud level and at that sort of user interaction level to where uh, the moving of things is, uh, is, is, seems to be quite portable. So um, that's kind of uh, the premise, premise. And so on top of this set of uh, features that are otherwise just uh, available by either uh, uh, wrapping low-level cloud components or applications that otherwise already exist. Um, there's a few features uh, in Cloudman that are uh, uh, just value added and custom to its or to, uh, a result of its own uh, uh, development. And so one is you can customize your instance. So each instance is completely self-contained, uh, meaning that you can um, you can modify it as much as you'd like to. So if you want to add your own data, if you want to add your own tools, if you want to rip things out, if you want to use your own image, uh, it, it's perfectly fine. And so it, it's, it's kind of nice, I guess, to, that you're able to start off not from zero, but from like level five or so, and then just build on top of that. So for example, in bioinformatics, there's 100 tools that are already available by default, but not that 101 that you really need. Well, you, and, but that one requires three others. And so you don't actually have to install those three others and go through the process of configuring those. Instead, you just add the one that, that's missing. And so, uh, so it gives you a head start. Uh, next thing that, that I mentioned, because they are self-contained uh, and, and some extra uh, work went in, you can share that entire instance. So for example, you have a, um, uh, you have, uh, a tool, you have an application that you want to deploy. Uh, but it has a readme file that's this long and requires uh, a large number of uh, uh, configurations and whatever. Well, instead of having users go through that readme file and install the thing themselves, you can install it yourself by customizing an instance uh, and, uh, uh, and just share it. 
and either make it public or share with an individual user. They derive a, a, a derived cluster from their shared instance and get the ex a replica, an exact config of what, uh, what you have uh, performed. So I instead of just being a, a, an execution platform, it can be a tool distribution platform as well. And then uh, lastly, the auto scaling thing, well, some of it natively comes from the cloud that you can dynamically scale up and down. So you just uh, you choose the instance type you want to run, add it, but it also has this notion of auto scaling. And it's not based on just on the CPU load, but instead on the, the size of the queue uh, in, in the job manager. So if the queue is, is full and moving relatively slowly, it'll add more nodes. And uh, as nodes uh, uh, sort of just start sitting idle, it'll, it'll kill them off and, uh, uh, and move things around. Uh, I mean, and terminate things and all. And so, uh, lastly, one architecture slide, like I said, it's, it's deployable on any uh, Ubuntu-based image because it has a, a few dependencies on Ubuntu uh, that, uh, uh, and you can just add it on. It has a, uh, uh, it keeps state in a persistent data repository, whether that be uh, Swift or, or S3, and then uh, it creates file systems based off of either volumes or, or, um, uh, or snapshots that can be, again, shared or not shared, and, and we're currently in the process of adding uh, basically an arbitrary uh, data uh, source to it as a file system. Uh, the first um, available feature is uh, adding an S3 bucket as a, a local file system. Uh, and then uh, we're soon going to have support for like a, an already existing NFS um, um, file system or, or we'll eventually go into more distributed file systems type stuff, so especially since I've been hearing about it a lot over the past two days. So anyway, I'm going to stop right there. and. Um, Thank you very much, Ennis. There we go. A very good overview.